certified and appropriately rated parachute rigger within the preceding 60 days, 90 days, or 120 days? The correct answer is number three, 120 days. Some of today's pilots do receive spin training, such as you see here. The airplane is pulled into a stall, a rudder is kicked to induce the spin, and after a few rotations, spin recovery is executed. This student pilot is getting a valuable exercise in unusual attitudes and spin recovery, but not necessarily in spin avoidance. Stall spin accidents account for almost half of all general aviation fatalities. They score about one kill each and every day. And because most of them occur at low altitude, only about 5% are recoverable. Now that's right, even an expert pilot with superb training has little or no chance of recovering from an inadvertent low altitude spin. So in this feature, my goal is not only to explain the dynamics of the spin and how to recover from one, but more importantly, I'd like to show you the conditions that can lead to a lethal spin, the unexpected low altitude kind that not even an air show pilot can recover from. We're at Screaming Eagle Aviation at Santa Paula Airport in Southern California to take you up in this super decathlon for a little demonstration. But before we fire up, a little planning is in order. Always check the pilot's operating handbook for weight and balance limitations for aerobatic flight. They usually are much more restrictive than for normal flight. Also, be sure to check the cockpit thoroughly. Make sure there are no loose objects that could become dangerous flying missiles. Parachutes, of course, often are required for aerobatic flight. And make sure that the area in which you intend to practice is off airways and that you'll be complying with other applicable FAA regulations. Okay, let's get going, shall we? Since 1949, the FAA has not required spin training for private pilots. As a matter of fact, most airplanes produced since then are not even approved for spins. Modern training emphasizes stall avoidance. The theory is, if you don't stall, you won't spin. Before 1949, however, more people were killed learning how to recover from a spin than were being saved by it. Now what I'm about to show you is the most common method used to teach spins. And the spin recovery technique is called the NASA standard method. And it applies to most general aviation airplanes. Now our altitude right now is 5,000 feet. And the best way to enter a spin is to first uh, retard the throttle all the way, allow the airspeed to bleed off somewhat, raise the nose, and just as the airplane stalls, we apply full right rudder to enter the right turning spin. Notice how a stall becomes a spin. As the aircraft yaws to the right, the right wing drops. Normally, stability would cause that wing to come back up again. But since the wing is stalled, the relative wind comes up to meet the dropping wing at a larger angle, which deepens the stall for that wing. At the same time, the left wing rises, which reduces its angle of attack. It becomes unstalled and the amount of lift is increased. This is the incipient or beginning stage of the spin. Now the spin develops into the steady stage. Here there is a relatively constant rotation rate, a constant and slow airspeed, and a fairly constant altitude loss with each turn. To maintain this steady stage, note that I've got to hold the stick all the way back to keep the airplane stalled. The third stage involves recovery. 
During an inadvertent spin, make sure the flaps are retracted. The wake turbulence from extended flaps can erode elevator and rudder effectiveness. Also, spin recovery ends with a high-speed dive that could damage extended flaps. Also, be sure to immediately close the throttle. Engine power produces a nose-up pitching moment, which can make recovery more difficult or even impossible. Neutralize the ailerons. Applying opposite aileron to help stop the spinning may seem tempting, but this can actually increase the rotation rate because of adverse yaw effect. Apply full opposite rudder. This may not be immediately effective, but hold full rudder opposite to the direction of the spin. If in doubt about which pedal to push, refer to the turn needle or turn coordinator and push the pedal opposite to the direction of indicated turn. When rotation is about to stop, briskly neutralize the elevator to unstall the wings. Do not apply nose down elevator before applying rudder because this could increase the rotation rate. Also, excessive forward pressure while still auto rotating can tuck the airplane into an inverted spin, which can be so disorienting that you might never recover at all. When rotation stops, immediately neutralize the rudder pedals. If you hold opposite rudder too long, spin rotation could start in the opposite direction. As airspeed builds, recover from the steep dive with normal techniques. The back pressure must be enough to avoid excessive speed, yet not so much as to cause an excessive G-load or an accelerated stall. Now look how much altitude we've lost in less than two rotations. You can readily begin to appreciate why a spin from below pattern altitude is virtually unrecoverable. Okay, here's the whole recovery again in real time. Nose up, stall, right rudder to begin spin, flaps up, throttle closed, opposite rudder, stick forward, neutralize the rudder, dive recovery. The whole maneuver took only a few seconds, but the plane lost a thousand feet. Although this recovery technique works pretty well in most light single engine airplanes, be sure to always follow the recommendations in the pilot's operating handbook for the airplane you're flying especially when flying twins and warbirds and jet airplanes, for example. The problem with learning spins this way is that the pilot learns to believe that the nose must be held high above the horizon for the stall to occur, but nothing could be farther from the truth. The most dangerous stall spin accident uh, usually occurs as the result of a skidding turn while turning from base to final approach. Here, let me show you what it looks like. Assume that the airplane is on base leg and slightly low on the approach and is about to overshoot final approach. The pilot fails to roll the airplane enough for the required turn, possibly because of ground shyness. Instead, he turns the airplane with bottom rudder. This causes a cross-controlled skidding turn. The excessive rudder increases bank angle and forces the nose down and the pilot, who's busily lining up with the runway, counters with opposite aileron and back pressure. Here's what happens if the airspeed decays and cross-controlling is sufficient. The airplane simply enters a spin toward the low wing. This is called an under-the-bottom spin. In the traffic pattern, it is usually fatal. Here's another spin scenario that is equally lethal. This type of spin accident usually occurs at takeoff at high density altitude, often with an obstacle to clear at the end of the runway. The pilot isn't getting the performance he expects, but proceeds with the takeoff anyway. He pulls the nose high to clear the obstacle, is holding strong right rudder because of torque and propeller effect, and he attempts to turn. He's on the edge of a stall and is skidding. From a safer altitude, here's what can happen. The upper wing stalls and the airplane performs what is called an over-the-top spin. Notice how the airplane rolls completely inverted and then enters a conventional spin. Near the ground, this is unrecoverable and usually fatal.
Most pilots know that a stall must precede a spin, but many don't realize that a spin usually will not develop unless the airplane is either slipping or skidding at the time it is stalled. Well, that's about it for this lesson. The subject of spin training is highly controversial, with intelligent advocates on both sides of the issue. If you choose to avoid spin training, that's fine. There's good reason for that course of action. But if you do choose to obtain some spin training, make sure you have a very experienced, qualified instructor, and make sure you have an airplane approved for spins. Frankly, I like an airplane approved for aerobatics. It provides an extra margin of safety. One exercise I recommend is practicing yaw control in deep oscillation stalls. This consists of entering a conventional power off wings level stall. But instead of recovering, keep the stick fully aft and the ailerons neutral. The airplane will oscillate about all three axes and may display a tendency to spin one way or the other. Learn to aggressively apply rudder and keep the airplane on an even keel. My best advice, though, for avoiding spins is simple. Avoid the stall. And as they say, maintain thy airspeed, lest the earth shall arise and smite thee. I hope you've enjoyed this video edition of ABC's Wide World of Flying as much as we've enjoyed producing it. In our next episode, Barry Schiff will give you an introduction to flying tail draggers. These airplanes offer the most fun and the lowest expense in flying today, if you know how to fly them. And Bill Cox